Cody Fajardo is the MVP of the Grey Cup, and uh, he's a winner all the way, as John Frenzy likes to say. Cody joins us today, just over a week after winning the whole big prize. Cody, how you doing, man? Congratulations. Way to go. And what's life like being you these days? Uh, I can't complain. It's been a, a wild week and a half, to say, and uh, the little guy is still trying to catch up on some sleep. We kind of put him through the ringer there, but be back here and home and getting back into our routine. Uh, every time I hear Great Cup, you know, champ, Great Cup MVP, it always brings a smile to my face. All the blood, the sweat, the tears, the hard work, it, uh, it's all worth it now. Your voice is gone, as was Sean Lemons <laughs> when he was on last week. What the hell did you guys do over the last week? You killed yourself. <laughs> what didn't we do over the last week? Yeah, you know, uh, for me, the entire playoffs, my voice was gone. Uh, just louder crowds. You just got to scream louder. Uh, a couple uh, impromptu speeches I'm sure everybody's aware of where uh, you, you lose your voice a little bit. But uh, I think the lack of sleep, you know, over the course of Sunday going into Monday, I slept 40 minutes. But uh, I, I soaked up every minute of that Great Cup celebration and winning it. It's, uh, it's not every year you get the opportunity just to be in the Great Cup, but to win it. Uh, I've been in the league going on nine years next year. And won two great cups and you think it comes every year in a nine team league and it doesn't you got to work your tail off to get there and so when you do win and you hoist it over your head especially when nobody expected you to uh, you celebrate a little bit harder okay man now we're getting into it i'll be honest with you and i am honest with you just like you're honest with me you made it look easy you didn't act no crack at all going into this great cup but it's a great cup it's your first ever start in one um how was your sleep the night before and the rousing speech you gave uh, what was that all like yeah you know uh, honestly it wasn't as crazy as i thought the week leading up to it obviously with all the anticipation all the hype all the media attention um that was a bit overwhelming in terms of just scheduling and you get out of your routine where it's just not show up to work, watch your film, go home. There was a lot of things that you had to do outside of just football, but that was all part of the show. And, and the CFL puts on such a great show, especially the Great Cup week. But in terms of the game, at the end of the day, you know, a couple of pe people I re reached out to, they just said, you know, it's football. You've been doing this your whole life. And people I respect really highly that uh, just told me, go out there, enjoy the moment. And so I try to not put too much pressure on myself and the team and Leading up into the week, everybody wanted to talk about our defense and special teams, rightfully so after the Eastern final, the way that they performed. So there was no pressure on me. There's no pressure on the offense. Uh, but we knew, and, and it, uh, Coach Moss actually shared with our offense, he said, you know, I just have a crazy feeling that our offense is going to have a great showing out there. Uh, I felt really good about the game plan. I thought we were uh, methodical in the way that the coaches brought in the game plan. There was calculated shots. There was quick game. There was stuff to get my, uh, the ball out of my hand quickly. And then obviously – establishing a run game uh all the all the woes and all the negative games against winnipeg you know you you trade them all in to to be able to beat them uh in the great cup it was all all worth it in the end robert from las vegas writes in he says as a devastated bomber fan i'm happy for you cody ally in texarkana texas she says death taxes and cody fajardo winning i love when rod says that uh nelson says where did that F you just watch speech come from, Cody? Was that boiled over? Was that boiled over frustration? How do you know as a leader when to deliver a speech like that? You know, I'm not the biggest vocal guy, and especially when you sign to a new team, the, my biggest goal this year was just to go out there and play and have the guys on the, on the team just watch how I go to work every day, my consistency, my discipline, and, and earn the respect that way. I didn't want to come in and talk. Obviously, I would talk to the offense and the receivers, but uh, Coach Moss on day three, he said, if anybody wants to have the floor, day four, we're going to open it up. And so I was thinking the night before, like, should I talk? Should I not talk? And I was thinking, well, if I want to get everyone's attention, I'm going to have to do a couple things that I normally don't do. One, it's yell and scream. And two, uh, use some profanity. And uh, the guys loved it. And the guys were fired up. The amount of tears and chills and people saying that they're ready to play that day. It was all worth it uh, in the end. But um, Super exciting. You know, what's been crazy over the last couple of days is the amount of Ryder fans that have reached out and just uh, continue to support me, even though I'm not in the green and white. That, that meant a lot to me and my wife and my family. Uh, the Argo fans that have reached out, the BC Lions fans that have reached out, and even the Winnipeg fans, the, probably the fan base that's been the hardest on me over the last four years. Um, there was a handful of them that reached out and were just extremely excited to see me hoisting a trophy over my head. And so it just goes to show that uh, – 
I was doing something right and being able to connect and make and build relationships and inspire people. And, and that's, those are the things that I, I, um, I enjoyed the most was hearing from people that I just totally didn't expect to hear from. I'm getting goosebumps as you say that. I'm not joking, man. <laughs> um, Shane, Shane, one of our sponsors from Deer Valley says, congrats, Cody, always a fan. Uh, so big win at, on the, and the MVP award, Deer Valley Golf and Estates, that is. Um, I'll be honest, you've had to eat a lot of crap and bite your lip in the last year. And I want to just give you the opportunity to say whatever you want to say, because I felt like I was eating it right there with you. And I got in some fights on your behalf, and I thought, well, ah, Cody's a big boy. He can handle it. But how does it feel? It's hard, well, man. It's not easy. It's not easy for you. Uh, how did you deal with it, man? Because you shut everybody it, up, and you know that. Well, I, I appreciate you. I, you always had my back, and, and I always text you that. That's why I love being a part of your show, because I know you've always fought for me. But, you know, the, the hardest thing last year was uh, just the uncertainty of not knowing and feeling like you gave everything you had to a province, to a team. Uh, and obviously, it wasn't, it wasn't good enough. and that was the hardest thing. It was like uh, playing injured and just trying to go out there and, and give everything you got. And the people that were just kind of writing me off and I felt like I had much better football. And, and I know when I don't play well enough and I know when I play well enough. And I know last year wasn't my best year and uh, that there was things I wanted to change and improve on. But, you know, I was going into my third year as a starting quarterback. You know, I've been in the league for eight years, but every year I'm just learning so much more and so much more as a starting quarterback. So in terms of that, I'm still very young and, and inexperienced, but each game I, I learned so much more. But at the end of the day, going into this year, I was just blessed for a second opportunity. And I, and I stated that uh, in training camp was in professional sports, it's not very often you get a second chance or a second opportunity, especially to play. Um, in free agency, a lot of people were offering me, you know, a veteran deal, come in, compete. If not, you'll be a veteran backup. But Coach Moss and Danny believed in me and being a franchise quarterback and uh, they offered me a two-year deal like I've talked about before, and that shows an investment and a commitment to me and a belief in me. And so uh, I spoke a little bit about this in the Great Cup week. Going into this year, I changed my mentality of going out there and playing for the people that believed in me as opposed to the people that don't believe in me because uh, I exhausted myself just trying to make everybody like me. And at the end of the day, it was uh, very hard to convert everybody into Fajardo fans. So I wanted my play on the field to do the talking, and God's plan is greater than anything I could come up with. And stand there hoisting the the cup and having my son Luca in my arms and hearing that I, I won the MVP you know like I said it makes those dark days those days when you want to retire the days when you think you should hang them up and nobody's going to want you it makes it all worth it in the end it'll bother me all winter if I don't ask you this question what caused that flip in your mind to to go from the haters motivating you to your supporters motivating you what did somebody help you with that or did you yeah. do it on your own or intuition you know, I, I felt like yeah it was more like exactly intuition it was something um i felt like you know i got off twitter this year for the entire season it was something i haven't done in the past and just the amount uh that i was just the negative comments and the things just was weighing on me a lot and i felt like if i could just clear my headspace and all the people who have my telephone number the people that text me after games and, and more importantly the people that text me after we lose football games that are proud of me those are the people you want to go out there and play for and um, there's a lot of fans that uh, I have a lot of respect for now because they've came up to me personally or they reached out to me personally and said, look, I was one of the people that was talking bad about you. And uh, I just want you to know I'm, I'm proud of you and congratulations. And so uh, th those mean a lot. And it takes a lot uh, for you, someone to uh, say that they're wrong and, and to say it to my face. And so that's all I ever wanted was just uh, people to believe in me and uh, to make this league as best as I can and to make Montreal Alouettes the best I can. And so uh, I, I was happy to be standing on that stage. And, uh, yeah, there wasn't really a, a, a big, you know, aha moment. It was just one of those things I felt like if I wanted to get to where I wanted to go, I, I needed to cl clear my mind during the season and just uh, focus on the, my inner circle and focus on the people that believe in me most. Well, um, I apologize to the audience. We don't have time to get to your questions. We'll have to bring Cody back once he's got a voice and uh, he's got more time <laughs> because he's a busy guy. But as you know, you mentioned those Ryder fans. A lot wrote in to me and, you, and said, can you please pass along to Cody that I, I love him and I always did, and I know those people did. I, it's important for them to know that they always had your back. I wasn't the only guy from the 306 that had your back. There's a lot of people that did.
man, that love you. And, that's, and, and uh, that's, I should also say, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. And, and, and that's exactly what I wanted to, to state and express. And I'm glad you, you had me on the show was, you know, everybody thought that the way things ended in Sask, you know, that uh, I have this uh, hatred towards Sask. And that's not, that's not it at all. There's a lot of great relationships I've built, built over the course of the years. I was in Sask. A lot of people that I'm very close with. And then hearing from all the fans, Saskatchewan Rough Riders was the first team to ever give me my opportunity. So I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for that organization, if it wasn't for J.O. and Dickie believing in me from the start. It's just unfortunate the way things ended, but that's professional football. And if you don't win games, obviously there's got to be changes to be made. But uh, the amount of Sask Rider fans that uh, reached out, it was truly overwhelming for me and my family and the support. And just hearing people reach out, I, I know that there's still a lot of Family. Like I said, we'll forever be tied to the heartland of Sask because of our son. We still got a lot of love in that province and the city of Regina for the Saskatchewan as a whole. Love to hear it, and uh, we could go on all day, but I'll let you go. I want you to look up the definition, the translation in French of repeat. Because that's what's <laughs> next. Not to put any pressure on you. Go enjoy this, Cody. I know you will. But that's what's next. So happy holidays. Enjoy, uh, enjoy it, man, and keep in touch. Thank you for having me on the show. Happy holidays. And, and that's the standard, right? If you want to be uh, in touch with the greatest of the time, you got to be consistent. And so we got a young team in Montreal, and I'm extremely excited to be back to work. I'm enjoying this one, but uh, I appreciate you, Rob, like always. Thank you, sir. Keep in touch. Grey Cup MVP and champion Cody Fajardo. And we'll look up on the break the dead translation of repeat. You'd think I'd know it.